Okay, you nine, today you are going to learn how to use equations to solve everyday problems. Now, I have been harping on for the last three or four weeks saying equations are important, equations are important. You will use them in your everyday lives. And most of you have been looking back at me and saying, what is this crazy person talking about X's and Y's and swapping over the sides? Today is going to make sense. Okay, today we are going to look at using equations or using that process of writing and solving equations in order to solve everyday problems. So before we begin, first thing we need to look at is how do we really tackle this? So when we use equations to solve problems, it's really important that we follow a particular set of steps. First, we will be given a worded problem. So first thing, number one, we must read the problem. Now, if you just want to in your in your rule books at the moment sorry abbreviate this so maybe one read problem to find out what the questions actually asking us the second is define a pronumeral so okay this worded problem is telling me something I know there's something in it that I need to find okay I'm going to call that pronumeral X or I'm going to call that pronumeral Y or I'm going to call it P or K or N doesn't matter I know I need to pick a pronumeral and I know I'm looking for in that worded problem what the question is asking me to find. Then I write the equation using this pronumeral, then I solve it. Then most importantly I give my answer in words, so my question was worded, my answer needs to be worded, and then I need to check and make sure my solution makes sense. This last point here, check and make sure the solution makes sense. This is what I have been going on about for the last three weeks. When you get an answer, look at it. Does it make sense? Okay, let's have a look at a few different examples. Okay, let's look at our first problem. So example one, five less than a certain number is nine less than three times the number. What? That doesn't even make sense. Let's read it again. Five less than a certain number is nine less than three times the number. Oh, okay, now I've read my problem a little bit more carefully. It does seem to make a little bit more sense. So that was step one, read. The second step says define the pronumeral and write a statement. Okay, so this certain number, this is the thing that I don't know. It's saying a certain number, five less than a certain number, is three times the number. There's this number and I don't know what it is. So I'm going to call it X. And my question says that 5 less than that certain number is 9 less than 3 times the number. So is means equals or equivalent. And it's 9 less than 3 times the number. So I've written an equation around this unknown, around this unknown, that I have represented with the pronumeral. Now, guys, it's just a simply a matter of solving it. So, a little bit of an issue because I've got a pronumeral on this side over here and on that side. So from previous lessons, I know this isn't going to be too hard. I'm going to get my pronumerals on one side. So I'm going to move the x from the left over to the right. So x subtract 5. I'm going to subtract the x from this side. I'm going to subtract the x from, oops, sorry, subtract the x from that side. So my answer becomes negative 5 equals 2x subtract 9. I can flip that around if I want. I don't have to. Now, I need to get my pronumeral by itself. So to get my pronumeral by itself, I'll add 9 to this side. I'll add 9 to this side because I'm now cancelling out the 9 because that's the thing furthest away from the x. So 4 equals 2x move that all up, 4 equals 2x, therefore divided by 2, divided by 2, x is equal to 2. If you don't follow that step, you'll need to go back and look at the previous tutorial on working with pronumerals on both sides. So x is equal to 2. Excellent. Now, I need to write that in a worded way. So it says, I have to write my answer in words. So once I've done all that working, 2 seems right. 2 doesn't seem like it's all that odd a number. It's not 45. 
okay? It seems like it's kind of an all right number. So I write my answer. The answer, oh sorry, the certain number is two. And that's it, I've written my answer in words. It is simply a matter of practice. Practice, 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 and a little bit more practice. That's the only way you'll get good at these guys. Lots and lots of practice. So let's look at the next example. This one here says, Simon and Mike make 254 runs between them in a cricket match. If Mike makes 68 more runs than Simon, how many runs did each of them make? Okay. What am I looking for here? Wait on. Simon and Mike make 254 runs between them in a cricket match. Okay, that's the total, 254. Oh, okay, so between the two of them, they make 254 runs. Okay. Mike makes 64 more runs than Simon. How many runs did each of them make? Okay, first off, we need to know how many runs Simon made. Because all we know is that Mike made 68 more than Simon. We don't know how much Simon made, but we know that all together they equal 254. So all together, the boys runs 254. Now, because we're talking about runs in a cricket match, I'm just going to use R. And I know that Simon's runs I'll represent with R, so the amount of runs that Simon made. And Mike made 68 more runs than Simon. So R plus 68. H. Okay, and I'll go brackets. R plus 68. Now, directly in front of my brackets is just a positive sign. Okay, and so if I really don't need to technically put the brackets in this time. So on this side, I have R plus R plus 68. So I have 2R plus 68 is equivalent to 254. Now I need to know how many runs, so I need to get this R by himself. So to get 60, rid of 68 on this side, I'm going to subtract 68 from here and subtract 68 from there. So I'm left with 2R is equal to 254 minus 68, 186. Okay, and I'm going to move this all up, 186. So if I divide this side by 2, when I divide that side by 2, R equals 93. Now, stop. What does that 93 represent? 93 represents R. What is R in this example? R in this example is Simon's runs, because we're using Simon as a base. So... Simon has made 93. Sorry, I've just deleted all that working. Simon has made 93. The question is asking us, how many runs did each of them make? Simon has made 93. Mike has made 93 plus 68, because it's told us here. He's made 161 runs. So my answer would be Simon made 93, Mike made 161. Simply a matter of practice. Simply a matter of practice, guys. Practice over and over and over again. Okay, and that's it. That's solving problems using equations.